Morning everyone, Anthony Beardsall here. Got a good example today of a cup and handle breakout pattern that appeared on the DAX one minute chart from the open this morning. And these type of patterns appear all over price charts. And this is a larger version of a cup and handle breakout and it involves about an hour's worth of price action. So, as always, when I'm trading the DAX, I'm looking to take trades in the first hour or two of price action. And the pre-market in the DAX, here you go, starts at 7 o'clock and ends at 8 o'clock. And you're beginning, probably if you've watched some of my videos, to get a feel for how this works now. And if you're a beginner trader, then just watch some more of these videos, practice yourself, use a demo account and get confident before you start taking trades with real money. But the opportunities are often the same on this particular market and this applies to all indices including the Dow and the S&P later in the day and also the FTSE as well. So market proper opens at 8 o'clock and I'm examining as it's coming up to 8 o'clock here I'm examining the price action within the chart so far. And this is the 7 o'clock candle here. And this is the 8 o'clock candle here. So you can see that during the pre-market, the market was in a downtrend. It's going down, it was making lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, all the way down here. And so it's in a downtrend. However, if you've watched these videos, then you'll notice that the range that the market establishes in early trading is often, it puts a barrier, if you like, at the top and the bottom of price action. And when the market opens, it very often trades within and in between these two barriers, the high and the low of the range. Let me show you what I mean. You've got the pre-market open here. So the market opens here, it goes up, establishes the high of the range, comes down, establishes the low of the range. Then the market opens and it often trades within this already established range in the first hour or two of trading. And what you find is that sometimes the market will break out and it will just carry on going. Let's say it just carries on going down or it just carries on going up. Sometimes that happens, but more often than not, you'll have a reversal pattern somewhere here, maybe at the top here. And you may get both. And these are tradable patterns. So you can see here, with just with this example, you've got a lower low and a higher low, and then the market starts going up to the top of the range, peaks at the top of the range, and then starts dropping down. So looking for trades within this area here. Also, if you get a, a block of price action, let's say in the middle of the range, and the market's already made a low, and it looks like it's establishing an uptrend or an up leg towards the top of the range, then these type of blocks of price action in the middle are also tradable towards one or other of the barriers, depending on the price action that you get within the blocks of candlesticks. So this is the type of thing that I'm looking for in the early trading periods in these indices. So what we got this morning was we got a downtrend in the pre-market action. You can see you could put a barrier across the top here and you could put a barrier at the bottom here. So this is the low, this is the high of the pre-market trading. Market opens and if you take a look at these bars, it, very often you get an idea as to whether a reversal within the range is likely or whether the market is going to break out. If you've got loads of green bars and they're very strong with no spikes on the top then the probability is that it will come to the top of the range bounce slightly and then break out if you've got loads of red bars and they're very strong then the chances are that it will come to the bottom of the range maybe bounce a bit and then carry on going down but that's not what we had today we had pr uh, we had price action that indicates the markets in a trading range we've got alternate bars we've got green bars red bars we've got spikes on the top of them rejection spikes on the top of them and if you you're trying to read each individual candlestick bar one by one then you're confused 
and because you can't make much sense of it and that indicates that you're in a trading range if there's confusion in the market if you've got lots of alternate bars like this then the chances are that the market's in a trading range and when it's ranging then you'll find that the probability goes in favor of the market bouncing up from the lows and bouncing down from the highs of the pre-market range you can also see that whilst the the eight o'clock bar this was the eight o'clock candlestick it was a big bullish candlestick it had rejection on the top here and it had rejection on the bottom as well so actually that was a one bar trading range and when you get a range bar as the first candlestick bar of the day then that does give a clue as to what the likely trading climate is for the early period of price action you've also got today today's a friday friday the 4th of may and you've also got the us non-farm payroll this afternoon which can move the market significant number of points and so traders are often cautious before that event at 1 30 uk time uh, they're, they're often cautious before that event they don't want to commit themselves to positions long term and that creates trading range price action as well so the market opens and it goes up and it makes a double top here and this is the 12,750 round number level. We've also got a pre-market high here. So the market rejected off those highs, made a double top. And it looks at this stage as though it's going to break out lower. So worth wait, waiting to see what happens because you can see that we then got a block of price action here. You can put a, a block around these prices and the market traded within this area keeps looking as though the market's going to break out lower and it doesn't it finally makes an effort to break out lower here breaks the low of this bar on this candlestick here and then immediately rejects back up and as soon as it starts doing that you have a clue that the market is not going to break out of the range lower anytime soon market then comes up and it makes a higher low so you've actually got a lower high here this high is higher than this high and you've got so a lower high here and then you've got a higher low so that's trading range activity as well when you get lower highs and higher lows so you can tell therefore that the price action is indicating the markets in a trading range okay so the market then comes down and rejects again it rejects big strong bear bar at one stage it was right down here more than 13 points this bar's length and it rejects back up comes down rejects back up market's giving us clues at this point in time and i got fooled uh where was it here i took a trade short and soon got out of that trade took a three and a half point loss on that one and I, I thought it was going to break out lower and it didn't. So I was fooled and that was a loss, first loss of the day. And so the market comes up and what you can see here is it's starting to make higher lows. So you've got a lower low here, higher low here, higher low here. And you can also put a line across the top here. And you can see that you've got rotating action underneath this barrier. It's quite a clear barrier. When the market's in a trading range and you're looking for breakouts, very often the, the level with, if it's a horizontal range, the level with the most equal price action, if you like, the most equal highs or the most equal lows, that, that is the barrier that's most likely to be broken and when you've got higher lows so lower low higher low higher low the market's being pushed upwards towards this barrier and this is what happens in a cup and handle breakout or a cup and handle formation you've got the cup here probably all of this price action here this space here's the cup and then the handles forming the handle can be it can be very tight price action going up and down like this and we did get that, but it was right at the end here. And this is what a 
pickup and handle formation looks like. So the upper barrier is established, market comes down, finds support here, goes back up, breaks through support, and then this line's creating resistance. Support becomes resistance, becomes resistance until the market squeezed up and it bursts out the top. And that's what happened this morning. So you've got your cup and you've got your handle. And here's a template for you that looks a little bit more like a cup and handle. And that's effectively what we've got on the chart. You see these formations all the time in blocks or ranges. So where you've got close price action, the market's making M's. If you turn this the other way around, the market's making an M formation or it's making a W formation. And you, see, you tend to find that you get the, the big cup followed by a tight handle and then the market's been squeezed upwards and it breaks out. And as you can see, that's what happened this morning. So for me, in taking this particular trade, uh, when the market rejected down here, I was looking for opportunities to take a long position as a breakout from the trading range up to this level here, pre-market high. So I was looking for opportunities. I didn't trade long i didn't take a trade long in this price action here because i needed more evidence but when the market came back down and it made a higher low again and then it rose above the exponential moving averages the eight blue line 20 red line exponential moving averages once it closed above there as it did here in this bullish pin bar candlestick bar here pin at the bottom green body at the bottom here it's a good sign. And the next bar was a doji bar, very, very small. And as the top of that bar is taken out here, that's where I went long. So got my stop nice and tight below here. It's confluence in that you've got the low here, you've got the low here, very similar lows. So stop goes below there, you enter. And the reason for entering here is you're entering in the base of the pattern, if you like. You could enter here. You could try and enter here, but let me tell you that when this bar came up here, this breakout bar, once it came up here, once it got to this level, you didn't have time to get in. It shot up. You couldn't even blink, and it went up 20, 25 points here. And so getting in here makes sense. The other reason it makes sense is because it means that if you're wrong and the market starts coming back down, then chances are that you'll get an indication that that's going to happen and you'll be able to exit your trade early without sustaining a full loss. Anyway, as you probably know by now, these type of trades, I'm looking for a two to one reward to risk. And we got this in this particular trade really easily. In fact, we got three to one. And so there was my entry. And my target was this level here, so I got out within the spike here. Might have even been higher when I got out because I just couldn't get out in time. And so that was an excellent breakout trade. Really, it really shot out of here. When you get a massive bar like this on this particular market, and this applies to most markets, when you get a huge big breakout bar like this, and it comes out of the base of a range, then you need to take your profits quickly because it's, chances are it's going to come back down and test the range barrier as it did here. And so uh, too many times in the early part of my trading, I'd sit there and I'd, I'd look at my account and I'd think, oh, fantastic, I've made two to one, three to one. Let's see whether we can get up here. And it had come back and <laughs> I would end up with a very small profit and I'd be sitting there really regretting not getting out at the top. So nowadays you get a nice big candlestick bar that doesn't give you time to get out. Once it does give you time to get out, just take your profits and pay yourself. And you should always be looking to take trades that are greater than one to one reward to risk. This one was two to one reward to risk or three to one reward to risk more like. And that's the sort of ratio you should be looking at. If you're looking at one-to-one -one reward to risk and you take into consideration the spread on the trade, so the fees that are involved in the trade, then 
you're you've got to be accurate you've got to be very accurate you've got to be looking at 70 to 80 percent win rate and for beginner traders that's just not likely to happen because you're going to take too many duff trades in the in the first part of your trading and so looking at a trading system a strategy that gives you good reward to risk certainly greater than one to one and more like two to one means that like I did today I had a very small loss three and a half points and then I had a win that was 25 points or so so a really you know there's only need for one or two trades a day when you've got a system that works like that and you can have a win ratio of 50 percent or you know most of the time it's a lot higher than that for me but you could even, you know, have a win rate of 40% as a beginner and still make good money with good reward to risk trading strategies. So that's the trade for this morning. Hope you found that useful. Nice cup and handle breakout trade. My name's Anthony Beardsall. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're finding these videos interesting and join us at excellenceassured.com forward slash trading for more of this type of tuition. We've also got training courses and coaching for traders who are looking to improve their skills. So please do get in touch. Leave me any comments below if you're interested in using my services, taking a training course or you just want to get in touch. That would be great. My name's Anthony Birdsell. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.